If you shoot landscapes, you're probably already familiar with the notion of having haze in long distance shots. And sometimes that can kind of ruin the impact of a shot that seemed amazing to the eye, but just doesn't quite translate. Well, thankfully, Darktable has a haze removal tool. And in this video, we're gonna look at just that. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 65 of Understanding Darktable. So the haze removal tool. This is a very simple tool. It only has two sliders, count them, two. So basically what happens is when there is moisture in the air at a distance, the light that is bouncing off objects that are furthest away from your camera and that light is then bouncing towards your camera, that light passes through the moisture in the air and that causes probably refraction, probably a little bit of diffusion. I'm not 100% certain of the phrases, but I'm sure it's probably refraction and diffusion. But essentially it mucks with the light. And so you end up with this look of a hazy background, right? So the haze removal tool in Darktable is designed to combat exactly this problem. So let's dive on in and have a look. I've got a random image that I picked from our Sri Lanka trip last year. This is Sigaria Rock in Sri Lanka. And as you can see, a little bit of haze in the middle distance there. And, you know, the sky is obviously a lot further back than the rock. But, yeah, you get the idea. So, if we have a look at the haze removal tool. Now, what I've done here is I was doing a little bit of testing before I started recording. And I've put the haze removal tool in, but I've put it on a blend mode of normal and set the opacity to 0%. And the reason I did that was because I wanted the module to stay in my active modules list. And I'll explain why in a moment. So we've got two parameters, strength and distance. You can probably already work out what they do. So I'll set the opacity to 100%. And straight away you can see that that has improved the look of the image. The strength control, as the name suggests, determines just how strong an impact the filter has on the image. If you set it to 100% it's going to look extreme, it looks pretty nasty, and there's really no right and wrong to how much strength you dial in, it really is just a matter of personal taste. Then we've got the distance control. Now, according to the help file, or the manual, the distance works from the camera away from you. And I find that rather odd. I would have thought that haze by its very nature is always furthest away from us. So... I would have thought the distance control would work from infinity back towards us, but apparently not. But maybe that's a limitation of the math that runs the module. I don't know. So the distance control is designed to work on haze closest to the camera at lower values. And the more you increase the distance value, then theoretically the further into the image it looks for haze to remove. And once again, there is no right and wrong. It is simply a case of dial it in until it looks right. It's a pretty simple module, really. Now, why did I want to keep the module active? Why did I go to all the trouble of the blend mode? Well, the reason I did that was because as I was prepping to record this episode, it occurred to me that the look that this module imparts on an image reminded me of the local contrast module. So for that reason, you can see that I've got the local contrast module active as well, but you'll also notice I've got it set to a blend mode of normal and the opacity wound down to 0%. So it's essentially 
bypassing the module but keeping the module active. So what I wanted you to see was if I set the blend mode for the haze removal tool back to zero, so we're now essentially bypassing the haze removal but still keeping the module active, and then we jump over to local contrast and we wind its opacity up to 100%, voila! It's a similar kind of look. Local contrast tends to remove a little more of the color. If you were to compare those two looks, and I could probably do that with the snapshot module. So we will take a snapshot right now. And now I will remove the opacity on local contrast, wind up the opacity on the haze removal, and then if we compare, we can see that there is a difference between the amount of color information between the two. So the left-hand side is the haze removal module. The right-hand side is the local contrast module. So it seems to me that Local contrast does a little bit more contrast, uh, but also seems to suck out a little bit of the color, where the haze removal tends to leave the color in not quite as contrasty as the local contrast, but it all depends on the strength of the haze removal that you dial in, like I said. So there you go. That's a very basic run through and pretty much I don't know how I could do an any more advanced run through of the haze removal tool. It's really helpful for just removing some of that distant haze in your landscape shots. Patreon supporters, I've got another tip for you guys, which I'll share in your video. Um, but that's going to do it for this episode. Short and sweet. Uh, it is now midway through July, and we're about a month away from the next major release of Darktable. Getting pretty excited about that. I am trying <laughs> to work my way through Aurelian's video for Filmic version 4. Um, and I did see something interesting on the, one of the mailing lists this evening about processing time, and that Filmic V4 is quite CPU intensive. So I guess we'll... Uh, We'll discover that when we get to that video. But uh, yeah, I've got to say, I'm looking forward to version 3.2 of Darktable, which will be out in a month. Alrighty, uh, I think that's about it. I don't think there was anything else that I needed to discuss. I hope you're all keeping well and you're staying safe. And um, yeah, what a crazy year. All right, until I speak with you next, take care.